Hunt 41 is a celebration of American waterfowl hunting. The 41 species of ducks and geese are the roadmap for us to tell the stories of the various regions, styles of hunting, and most importantly, the people that are representing this great pursuit of ours. This is the original series, The Chase for the 41. My understanding is uh, it was a boat that uh, was a mail carrier and a grocery delivery ship for the freighters of the Great Lakes. As the story goes, she's bumped, bumped halls with some of the greats like the Edmund Fitz. I mean, anyone who knows anything about maritime knows the Edmund Fitzgerald. So very cool, very cool to have such a, a rigid piece of history that's been remodeled and revamped and repurposed time and time again. Um, actually, the previous owner named it Foul Play and that was one of the stipulations is we couldn't change the name. Which, why would you want to change foul play? It's hilarious. We play hard and we hunt hard. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's been a godsend. We've been able to get out here in the big open water. We really get to see a lot of the birds because they work down in this Lake Erie is the last the last big pot of water before on their way on their journey south. So a lot of these birds are coming from Canada, way up there. The snow really brings them in. <laughs> there is no mode of ducking that is so novel or attended with greater discomfort and danger than winter shooting on Lake Erie. <laughs> The ducks that make their homes in these icy waters are a prize to any waterfowler willing to stand up to the challenge and risk involved on these gigantic waters. That's what I wanted to see. You get uh, everything from sea ducks all the way to a little bit of puddlers and then divers too, so it's rad. <laughs> The Great Lakes are known for uh, really rough weather. There's a lot of ocean captains that uh, captain the Great Lakes and say, just due to the fact of the waves being so close when they get big, um, there's not a lot of space in between each crest of the wave. So the ships take a lot more pounding. Um, the waves will wash right over the deck. In 1913 was a prime example don't know the exact number of freighters, but it killed over 200 sailors in one foul swoop. And just like November, the month of November is just known to take ships, small boats, and unfortunately duck hunters as well. Experience in Michigan, it can go from 50 and sunny, weather can drop down to single digits all within four hours and uh, Armist Day is a prime example of that. Here's a testimony from the Armistice Day storm throughout the Great Lakes in 1940. Excerpted from All Hell Broke Loose. Casualties ran so high, in part because the shooting was so good. Mallards were everywhere, though hard to hit because of the ferocious wind. When Onan, Ed Kozadowski, now 70, remembers what it was like. The ducks were all over, so we just stood there and shot them. We had warm clothes, extra socks and all, so we kept firing away. Oh, it was a terrible night. We didn't make it to shore until about 10 o'clock. But that shooting, oh, that shooting, you couldn't imagine it. For two days, old Mother Nature acted like a mistress of the Grim Reaper, howling, lashing, and freezing everything in her reach. No one knows exactly how many hunters died that day. Their deaths were lumped together with all the others, like the people who died stranded in their cars on the streets of Minneapolis and St. Paul, and the sailors who drowned in Lake Michigan. 
but some say that perhaps as many as 80 men died in their blinds or boats. So why did the uh, diver thing stick more for you, you think, than um, your brother? It's probably just, I, I like, I like the, I like to drive a boat to be honest. <laughs> it's uh, really nice to be out in the lake. Um, and you'll never get a better hunt than when the birds are landing right up the pipe while you're laying in the decoys. Nice shot. Can. Oh, right over his head. Of the American ducks, the canvasback is easily the most famous. We got a canvasback crip. The canvasback is an American species. In winter, it ranges south as far as Central America, but confines itself to no portion of the country, being equally abundant on both coasts and in the interior as well. But the fame of the canvasback is now too firmly established ever to be shaken and it will continue to be regarded, as it has so long been, as the That's king of our ducks. Yeah. That's a beautiful duck right there. <laughs> Good boy you are. <laughs> and when you see them work, they're at your eye level, then they'll pop up, see your decoys go back down, and then hopefully come right in. Harvesting ducks and harvesting flocks of ducks have been around for as long as ducks have been flying, you know? As yeah. People, and as soon as they'd learned how delicious duck, duck fat is, and everything like that, they would come out here and drop, you saw those piles of birds this morning, they'd come out and drop like half of them with punt guns or whatever, and then when yeah. they made it illegal, a uh, couple of guys around these parts, Hi, Hi Dalkey, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, and uh, one of his buddies kind of drew it up on a bar napkin over here at one of the bars um, and they built it up and started a whole whole different method of duck hunting due to sink boxes being illegal, punk guns being illegal. I mean they were trying to do whatever they could to harvest as many birds. No one can learn how to shoot by reading about it in books. The only way that the art can be acquired is by practice. If he waits until the moment when they are nearest to him, he is almost certain to shoot behind them. As a rule, if birds are coming from the leeward, let him rise to shoot as soon as they get over the tail of his decoys. A common error of beginners is to shoot at the birds too late. In the same way, at overhead birds, he should shoot before they are actually above him. Michigan duck hunter to me would be uh, just gritty. Um, their adversity would be a good word to use. It's, I would say their skin's very thick. Uh, it can go from the best the best days to the lowest days real quick. I'm humbled. That's a good <laughs> when it when the weather is good and the ducks are here, it's I would trade that for the entire world. <laughs> I feel like the Michigan duck hunter is very outgoing. Awesome. Maybe he doesn't want to walk miles into the marsh, and this could just be me, but I'm sure other Michiganders feel this way. It's nice to be able to hunt on big water. It's still a lot of work, don't get me wrong, but it's just different. And uh, just being able to work with the dogs is so cool. A lot of my friends are all getting dogs now, and it, it's just an amazing thing, you know, to see the Michigan duck hunter. <laughs> Bad synopsis, but.
This is, Tim's got to call it the duck shelf. <laughs> Feels just incredibly, incredibly lucky to be a part of something so cool, you know. canvas back and since for many years it was chiefly killed where the so-called wild celery abounds as a matter of fact it may be doubted whether in waters where this plant is abundant the canvas back is better than some of its fellows on the duck tribe such as the redhead or the witchin I picked up duck hunting in 2011 and uh, basically just like learned trial after error. We had no one to teach us anything or show us the way. So, you know, the first time when we picked up duck hunting, you know, we got wood ducks. So we we're by our college town area and we just throw them in this pothole because we got pushed out of this other area. And we go hunker down into this pothole, and all of a sudden these wood ducks are flying. Well, wood ducks are going like way too fast for a rookie. We're shooting off shell after shell, missing every single one. We drop one duck, and it was like heaven. Like it was just like money. The coolest thing is now we're just gathering up more and more duck hunters because none of our friends duck hunt, and no one in our family duck hunts. So then my brother got into duck hunting, and and then he took off. <laughs> Buys like a ship. <laughs> Giant layout. So, like, the river stays super tight. And then it goes into like these swampy areas. And uh, the nice thing is like a lot of it's the PM um, public land, so that's really nice too. But um, yeah, it uh, really keeps it open. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely way more fishermen. There's not nearly as many duck hunters up here, but we don't get the main migration. Like it seems like the migrations, for what I've heard, is you get a little bit of a mix between the Atlantic uh, Flyway and the Mississippi Flyway from Canada and they kind of pool up. They usually swing through these two corners, so they'll either come through the right or come through that gap there. Sometimes they come right through here, so um, I think if you guys get the woods here, or um, just to have like a, a weekend getaway where we don't have to worry about, you know, dealing with people where we can walk out and be like, how was your hunt? Oh, it was good? You enjoyed it? Good deal, yeah, we had a good hunt too. Like it's more like friendly instead of like, yeah, there's like another couple groups that hunt over here and they're super nice and we, we get along and stuff like that and we kind of push birds back and forth when we're around, so it's pretty cool too. I feel like the ducks, uh, That's a maybe it's me, maybe because I don't know how to mallard hunt as well over in the southeast area, but it, it seems like the ducks decoy really well. Like <laughs> it's more of a natural communication, which is like really fun. We don't really like to use mojos because we kind of feel like the ducks kind of learn really quick out there. So where are we? Maybe for someone who doesn't know, yeah, uh, with the mitten. Yeah. yeah. Where, where are we on the mitten? So the cool thing with the mitten part is we're honestly right on the, the point. So the, the furthest point out into Lake Michigan is where we are. And uh, yeah, the, there's uh, these rivers that dump in out there. And, uh, you know, just uh, we end up fishing and finding duck spots while we're doing That one was close. That's so close. Yeah. Dead bug. Now, now it's dead. Now it's dead. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so. so that's one crazy thing as well. That guy must have had, had a drive by. Because on the opening day, these guys pulled up with their truck. And I'm like, I pull up next to him. I'm like, oh, looks like you guys beat us. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I go, oh, we, we, we love hunting over there. Do you usually hunt like right over here? You kind of cross the river there. He goes, yeah, yeah. We usually go over to that back corner. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good spot. So now we call it the usual spot because we never knew about that spot. I just asked the guy like all these questions and gave him vague information. He gave me the exact location. <laughs> W wasn't it true? Like when we shot our our limit, I'm, we're still out there picking decoys, and they're still landing on top of us. <laughs> you know what? I figured out the problem. When the day is slow and the ducks don't want to fly, many duck hunters go for a walk. It's a great time to take in some fresh air, maybe find a new pond. Look, there are some ducks. Mike, Mike. Watch out for those potholes. Good dog. Not much compares to a Labrador retrieving a beautiful Drake Mallard. Days like this remind you why they call it hunting, not shooting. He was supposed to be my fishing dog when I first got him. I, I mean, I knew I was going to do some duck hunting, but I just got into duck hunting. Um, but for fishing, he's not as good. <laughs> he really likes to jump in and try to capture the, the fish himself. So that makes it for a hard nut job. Fish different styles too. Yeah. up in northern Michigan right now and uh, we're out here trying to get on some ducks and some geese today. We got a good feed, probably about a thousand ducks and about a thousand mallards or a thousand mallards and a thousand geese. Uh, all graders, you know, a few few lessers in here and there. But we got a really good ditch hide today. We got nine guys and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some shooting today. <laughs> So right now we're set up on a tilled up cornfield and we got about 30, oh, yep, they're right here. We got birds coming in right now. Can you, uh, can you stretch this up? Okay, locked up. Today in this cornfield, we're about 15 miles off of the actual lake itself. Either way, if they, if they come out front like that, they should still be able to swing. And we're about about 35 miles south of Saginaw right now. So we got a you know good flyway, a lot of lakes around us, a lot of good farmers that have these fields cut pretty decent and left a lot of crop on the ground for these birds to stay stay in the area. It's not getting too cold, you know, we're experiencing some snow right now, but that's good. It's going to get those birds moving. Nothing too cold to get these water holes freezing up, so that's going to keep them in the area. And uh, they should be getting up here soon and we'll be able to get some shooting done. If we can see in the snow. Nice shot. 
So, these birds decided to switch up on a feed, really not even a feed, they just hop fields right across from us here. So we're going to take about 12 dozen, stretch them out down and make another little pod, move the blinds down about 50 yards. And as you can see, we still got birds coming in, so we're going to see if we can't go ahead and try to pull a few in. Let's start beating these snows off these decoys. Nice shooting, guys. Nice yep. shooting. Ever since I was 14, I, I got three main farmers around here that have over 10,000 acres put all together that I have permission to hunt on. It's not not often that you can get on get on fields where you can shoot ducks and geese in Michigan. It's rare, you know. So these these guys are a big part of what we can do, you know. So at the end of the year, we like to go ahead and get some bottles of whiskey for the guys and a bottle of wine for the old ladies, and you know, say our thanks. Yeah, every year that I get to travel around throughout the duck season and, and meet new people and see ways guys hunt, I see a lot of the similarities, but I also get to really see what makes different duck hunters tick. Going to Michigan and meeting all these guys that if it wasn't for this project and really what American Waterfowl and Hunt 41 stands for, I would never meet these guys. And so feel real thankful to get to step into their world and see how they hunt and share some good times and a good storm and just realize too how much uh, no matter where I go across the country hunting ducks and geese we're all ruined by the same duck bug and obsessed and will do anything in any conditions to get that opportunity to hunt ducks and geese we're, we're obsessed And it's cool to think that these birds are coming uh, north all the way from Ontario and down and even further than that and they travel down and this is kind of like their last stop on their way out. I mean, you get a bunch of birds piled up at the Mackinac Bridge way up north. Um, Lake Superior gets some good birds. Lake Michigan, where my brother is at, because um, you can go out in Lake Michigan and shoot Old Squaw or you can go sit in the marshes and shoot mallards. Um, down here in Lake Erie, I feel you get the most possibility for variety of ducks. Here, going back, I mean, 100 plus years, there have been guys laying out here forever. It's, it's just crazy to even think about. I mean, all the way back to the natives, which were very prominent in this area, we're out here with spears and bow and arrows and nuts hunting ducks on these same waters. So it was very cool having a little bit of ancestral heritage in the area myself. I, I just can't speak enough for just feeling really blessed and being able to just be part of such an, an amazing outfit. Is, is there anybody you'd like to thank? I'd like to thank... Uh, First off, I'd like to thank God like for giving God. us this beautiful day. I'd like to thank uh, Gavin Newsom back at home for our 10 p.m. curfew. What about your mama? What about your mama? Would you like to thank her? 14 pounds and 6 ounces. Thank you, mama.
becoming the duck hunter that you are today. Yes. Okay? Okay, crazy. From all of us at Hunt 41, this is American Waterfowl.